Hi, I'm Jorrit, a deepfake enthusiast. Today I'll be discussing Deepface Labs pre-training capabilities. We'll discuss what it is, why you would use it, when you would use it, and I'll show you how to use it. As always, you'll find all the project files in the description of this video. Let's get right into it. What is pre-training? For a normal deepfake video, we would take a video, convert it into frames, and then put the frames through an encoder and train a decoder. This decoder can then be used to generate faces just like the input face. But with tree training, we do this differently. Pre-training takes a lot of random faces and inputs these into the encoder to create a kind of generalized decoder. This decoder will predict faces with average characteristics. While regular trained defects are highly accurate in their transformations, they can only be used for their specifically trained faces and cost a lot of time and resources to make. Randomly trained decoders can be used for any face, but they give us an undesired semi-randomized output face. But when we combine the two we see some magic happen. We can start regular training on two existing random training sets, making it easy to achieve high quality results with minimal training. Here we see what difference a pre-trained set can do after only 10k iterations. You can watch the full training video link in the description. You should pre-train if you are planning on making multiple videos in the same style with the same settings. It's already worth it if it's two. Pre-trained models will have the same video settings as the final product, so make sure those align. It's also really handy to prototype deepfakes before you decide to invest time into it. You can really quickly make something. Some models even require pre-training because otherwise the chance for collapse is too big. You can read more about that on the deepfake forums. So now I'm going to show you how you can create your own pre-trained model. Uh, before we do this, you should always check online if someone else has already made the same model you're after, so that could save you a lot of time. Uh, but well, I'll show you how to find those uh, later in the video. For now, uh, yeah, get your video files as you would for an actual project. Um, start open up your workspace, paste them in. I already have them here, so that's fine. Um, well. We just uh, start off as the useful, so extract the images. Um, I think I've already done this, so we don't necessarily need to do this right now, but I'll uh, go through it really quick. Okay. Um, yeah, extract the image from the data destination as well. Um, get the face set, and then extract the face set of the destination as well. So I'll just quickly paste that in and then we can continue on. So now that I have everything set up, uh, we can go on to the actual pre-training part. Um, so I'll train it in SEHD. Uh, we start this up. Uh, now we can set up the new model, so I'll just call it a pre-trained uh, model and then you can give it the name to know which one it is. I'm going to render this at lower settings, so this can be 64 pixels. Um, just choose the GPU. So the next part is pretty important. Um, you have to set up the same settings you want your project to have later on. Um, so I'll just quickly go through this. So um, yeah, set this up as you uh, would for your actual project. Um, the target iteration uh, for pre-training sets, uh, the recommended amount is between 350,000 and 500,000 iterations. Uh, so I'll just set it to 500,000. Uh, you can of course do more so it gets even better, uh, but the uh, bare minimum is 350,000. Um, yeah, sure. So these are uh, yeah your own um, preferences. I'll just keep it to the minimum because I'm running on a low-end computer at the moment, so uh, you should really look into these settings uh, for your project yourself. So, uh, this is the most important part. Uh, this here it asks if you want to enable the pre-training mode, and now we uh, say yes. And now it actually um, skips our own files and starts initializing random images to pre-train on. So it says right here it loaded 15,000 backed phrases from an already uh, from a file that's already in DeepFaceLab itself. 
Um, so now it's going to start pre-training and in a second we'll see what that looks like. So now it, it trains just as it would with a regular uh, training, uh, but it uses, uh, well, random faces. Uh, the source image and the destination images are just uh, random faces of people. Um, and if you look closely, you can surely see that it's starting to generalize faces uh, out of there as well. So this is going to take a while and I'll be back later to explain how we can use this uh, pre-trained model when it's done. So for this example I'm not going to wait till this is uh, entirely finished. I'm just going to um, show you where it is at now and then just save it and exit. Um, so we'll just pretend that this one is uh, done with the training. So you should now have a uh, finalized pre-training set. I can just close this. Uh, and what that's done is it has created a model in your workspace. Um, this model uh, basically contains your pre-trained uh, yeah, model. Um, so before we can continue on, uh, we need to save this model uh, to keep it safe somewhere. Because this is the model you're going to be reusing over and over again. So I'll just make a new folder, for example. Pre-trained models and then I'm going to set it up here and this was the uh, 64 uh, I, uh, I this the low resolution one uh, so I should give it the name of the settings it has and then just paste it in here so I can uh, come back to it whenever I need it um, so when, whenever I want to train something uh, new using the pre-trained model now I would simply paste the model in here uh, uh, with the video that I want to use around it and then we can go back to the training. Uh, we click train SEHD again and now uh, it comes up uh, that we have this model in there. So this is the model we just trained, it's the pre-trained model and I'll choose that model. Now what we need to do is whenever we select it and we select our GPU again now we have to press enter within two seconds and now we can get to override the current settings so I'll keep all the uh, old settings uh, the same so this is all fine uh, for now and I just need to change one thing at the bottom of course you can change the settings uh, however you like uh, so now we're back at the enable pre-training mode and now I can finally exit it with uh, a no. And this basically tells it uh, to stop using the random phase data set and start using our own data set. So now I've done this. And it should pick up on my own video again when it starts training now. So yeah, we, have, we are back to my own uh, video and we can see it starts training on that. And it also starts uh, at iteration 1 again. So it uh, doesn't count further from the pre-trained model, it just starts over. But it uses the pre-trained model as a guideline. So we should see that the uh, yeah the facial shape comes in pretty quick now that we have the pre-trained model. So now you can train just as you would normally. And uh, yeah, the, the next steps are uh, the same as always. Um, I'll just cancel this out for now. I'll save it, exit. So uh, whenever we want to start a new project, we could just replace these videos uh, and uh, do the basic steps again. And then uh, instead of actually training it, we could paste in the model we just created. And that would save you a lot of time. If you know that your target will have specific characteristics, you can also make a custom pre-training set. For example, with only males or women or blonde people. Um, and we can do this by creating our own um, yeah, face set. Um, to this, is we first have to clean the workspace again. Uh, so I'll just quickly do that. 
them uh, you may have to make sure that you have like a collection of the people with these traits so for now I have an example with some uh, blonde men uh, we take these images and uh, we go back into the workspace now we can paste these images into the data destination so I've just pasted all these random blonde men in here then uh, we go to the data destination uh, let's see that's number five uh, face set extract so we make sure that it finds their faces so it's found all eight of my images and faces and that's fine uh, now that we have that we can uh, select 5.2 uh, data destination you do face set back so whenever I click this it creates a, uh, a set of my faces doesn't have to delete the original from me. So now it should have put this into my workspace. So I go back into my data destination, look into the aligned faces, and here it is a face at that pack. This contains all these uh, blonde boys that I just set up. And um, now if we want to uh, create a new pre-training file uh, from that uses this file, I will have to go and open up the internal. Then we see here pre-train faces. And here's the, fa the the original face set pack that comes with the face lab. Um, I'll just rename this and then I'll paste the new one in. So this one is the the pack we just created. Now it will defaultly uh, use the new face set uh, pack. Um, it uses the one with the name face set dot pack. So uh, we can leave all the old ones here and we should just name them accordingly. And now you can just re run your pre-training as usual and it will use this, uh, use this set. Remember, you're not the only one working on deepfakes. People share their pre-trained models and face sets online. If you go to the Deepface Lab GitHub page and you search for supplementary materials, uh, you'll find links to the community where they, can sh where they share pre-trained models and uh, celebrity face sets. Um, yeah, if you go there it opens up a forum and then uh, you can find uh, all kinds of pre-trained sets made by the community um, yeah so even if they are not the exact settings you would use um, scroll around through them and find one that matches closely and then you can still save a lot of time by using that one <laughs> Pre-training creates a generalized model based on random phases. You can reuse this model to quickly train on a specific phase. This reduces time and resources compared to your regular training. I tried my best to get you up to date with pre-training in this video. If you missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Have fun with your next deepfake project!